40 feet beneath the James River. I'm on the Mary, the tunnel boring machine. Down there in front of her, there's nothing but earth. Mary, the tunnel boring machine, broke through the head wall at the South Island of the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel expansion. Layla Cox has details. Picture this. 450 feet beneath the churning waters of Virginia's coast, a mechanical beast the size of an entire city block is methodically devouring the ocean floor. This isn't science fiction. This isn't some distant future project. This is happening right now every single day as America quietly executes one of the most audacious engineering feats in human history. A 10 million pound machine named Mary is carving through underwater bedrock with the precision of a surgeon and the power of a hurricane. Above her, 3,000 workers labor around the clock on artificial islands that didn't exist five years ago. Below her, tunnels stretch through darkness that will soon carry 150,000 vehicles daily beneath the sea. But here's what makes this story absolutely extraordinary. This isn't America's first time tunneling under the ocean. They've been perfecting this impossible art for seven decades, turning what seemed like fantasy into the backbone of an entire region's survival. And the story of how they got here will change everything you think you know about what's possible when human ambition meets the raw power of the sea. When the ocean became the enemy. In the middle of the 20th century, two Virginia cities found themselves trapped by geography and tormented by opportunity. Norfolk and Hampton sat just miles apart, separated by the treacherous waters of Hampton Roads Bay. Norfolk bustled with cargo ships and military vessels, serving as America's gateway to the Atlantic. Hampton housed the world's largest naval base, where aircraft carriers lined up like sleeping giants. Yet these two critical cities might as well have been on different planets. Every day, rickety ferries carried just over 200 vehicles across waters that could turn deadly without warning. When storms rolled in from the Atlantic, the ferries stopped running completely, paralyzing an entire region that America couldn't afford to lose. Picture this. Military personnel stranded on the wrong side of the bay during emergencies. Cargo trucks loaded with critical supplies sitting motionless in endless lines and an entire economic lifeline hanging by the thread of weather patterns and aging boats. The ferry system wasn't just inconvenient, it was a national security nightmare waiting to happen. As America's post-war economy exploded and car ownership skyrocketed, those 200 daily vehicles became 2,000, then more. The ferries couldn't expand. The bay couldn't shrink. Something had to give, and everyone knew a crisis was building beneath the surface of this maritime bottleneck. The bridge that could never be built. The obvious solution seemed simple. Build a bridge. Connect the cities with a span of steel and concrete like countless other waterways around the world. But Hampton Roads Bay had other plans. The geological surveys revealed a nightmare scenario. The bay floor consisted of mud so soft that bridge foundations would sink like stones dropped in quicksand. Atlantic hurricanes regularly transformed these waters into a washing machine of destruction that could obliterate any surface structure overnight. The tides created currents powerful enough to twist steel, but the engineering challenges paled compared to the strategic implications. Any bridge crossing Hampton Roads would create the world's most vulnerable military target. Enemy forces could sever America's most critical naval base with a single well-placed strike. The Norfolk Naval Base housed dozens of aircraft carriers worth billions of dollars each. A collapsed bridge wouldn't just inconvenience commuters, it would trap America's naval might behind an impassable barrier. Military planners ran scenario after scenario. Every analysis reached the same terrifying conclusion. A bridge would transform a strategic asset into a strategic liability. The solution couldn't go over the water, so America decided to go under it. The impossible becomes reality. In 1957, 12 years before humans walked on the moon, America unveiled something that seemed equally impossible, the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel, the first structure on Earth that allowed automobiles to dive beneath the ocean and emerge on the other side. Imagine experiencing this marvel for the first time, you're driving across what appears to be a normal bridge when suddenly the road begins descending. Daylight fades as your vehicle enters a tunnel nearly 100 feet below the ocean surface. Above your head, massive cargo ships pass like shadows, their hulls separated from your car by concrete, steel, and the crushing weight of the sea. The engineering required to create this underwater passage defied every conventional wisdom of the era. Hundreds of workers labored in pressurized environments, 
positioning concrete sections that weighed thousands of tons each. Every joint had to be perfect. Every seal had to hold against millions of gallons of water pressing down from above. Two artificial islands rose from the bay floor, each spanning over 15 acres and constructed from millions of tons of sand and rock hauled in by an endless parade of barges. These weren't just engineering achievements, they were new pieces of land created from nothing, permanent additions to America's coastline designed solely to connect underwater tunnels to surface bridges. When the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel opened, it carried about 6,000 vehicles on its first day. Engineers celebrated, politicians made speeches, the impossible had become routine, but success created its own problems. When Success Becomes a Crisis by 2008, that modest daily count of 6,000 vehicles had exploded to over 100,000. The engineering miracle had become a victim of its own success, creating traffic jams that stretched for miles and wait times measured in hours rather than minutes. The same nightmare that plagued the old ferry system had returned, amplified by decades of population growth and economic expansion. Military personnel missed critical deployments, emergency vehicles sat trapped in traffic, the economic lifeline that the tunnel was supposed to protect was slowly strangling under the weight of its own popularity. Virginia's Department of Transportation, VDOT, faced an impossible challenge. How do you expand a structure that exists both above and below the ocean without shutting down the region's most critical transportation artery? This wasn't just an engineering problem. It was a $4 billion puzzle with no margin for error. For 10 years, teams of experts conducted hundreds of geological surveys, earthquake simulations, hurricane models, and military attack scenarios. Every possible solution was analyzed, stress-tested, and reimagined. The stakes couldn't have been higher, get it wrong, and you could paralyze an entire region for years. Enter the Beast By 2016, Virginia made a historic decision that would reshape their coastline forever. Instead of replacing the existing tunnel, they would build two massive new tunnels running parallel to the original route, deep beneath the ocean floor. The project would require expanding the entire Interstate 64 corridor by more than 60 miles, replacing 27 bridges and constructing two new artificial islands in the middle of the sea. The cost was staggering, nearly $4 billion, enough to rebuild 10 stadiums the size of Wembley or power a small city with solar energy for 50 years. This became the largest infrastructure project in Virginia's history, employing over 3,000 workers laboring around the clock seven days a week. But turning this multi-billion dollar vision into reality required something extraordinary, a mechanical monster unlike anything America had ever deployed. Meet Mary, named after Mary Winston Jackson, the first black female aerospace engineer at NASA who once worked in Hampton. This colossal tunnel boring machine was built by Germany's Herrenknecht, often called the Rolls-Royce of tunnel boring companies, and her specifications read like something from a science fiction novel. Mary stretches over 450 feet long, roughly the length of a football field. She stands as tall as a four-story building and weighs 10.4 million pounds, heavier than seven Airbus A380s combined. Her cutter head measures 46 feet in diameter, delivers 27 million pounds of torque, and produces 56,000 kilowatts of power, about 40 times stronger than a modern locomotive engine. Just manufacturing and shipping Mary cost $70 million, the price of two luxury super yachts. It took 14 months to build her in Germany, four months to ship her halfway around the globe by sea, another four months to assemble her components, and six more months of calibration before she was ready to begin her underground journey. The Monster Awakens by 2023, Mary officially began her methodical consumption of the seabed beneath Hampton Roads Bay. But the geological layers she encountered would test every aspect of her sophisticated design. Beneath those waves lay soft, quaternary silt and Yorktown sand, geological formations as fragile as flour. Just a few inches of misalignment could cause the entire tunnel structure to collapse like a house of cards. To counter this deadly precision requirement, Mary was equipped with a mixed shield system capable of injecting high-pressure mud to stabilize the tunnel face as she advanced. She essentially created her own artificial skin, protecting herself while simultaneously carving through the unstable seabed. 
Each time Mary moved forward a few feet, 1191 reinforced concrete rings, each about 20 inches thick, were installed directly behind her, forming what looked like the massive steel backbone of some prehistoric sea monster. Inside the tunnel, hundreds of engineers worked 24 hours a day in a hyperbaric environment where the pressure was 10 times higher than normal atmospheric conditions. Radar systems continuously scanned every inch of the tunnel walls. Underwater robots inspected each joint with mechanical precision. Even a tiny leak could allow over 100,000 cubic feet of seawater to rush in within minutes, turning the tunnel into a death trap. To rotate Mary's 5 million pound cutter head, engineers employed nitrogen slide pads, a low friction technology once exclusive to European projects. This marked the first time in United States history that such a system had ever been used to bore a parallel undersea tunnel, and only the second application worldwide. The Breakthrough Moment After more than a year of relentless work, grinding through geological layers that had rested undisturbed for millions of years, April 17, 2024 became a date that would be remembered in engineering history forever. Mary finally broke through the last wall of soil, completing her first tunnel beneath Hampton Roads Bay. Cheers erupted in the control room. Engineers who had spent months in pressurized darkness embraced each other with tears streaming down mud-streaked faces. After nearly 70 years since America's first underwater tunnel, Virginia had once again conquered the sea. But the celebration was brief. Mary's journey was only half complete. The mechanical beast now faced perhaps her greatest challenge, rotating 180 degrees underground to begin drilling the second parallel tunnel. This single maneuver required six months of careful disassembly, precise rotation, and meticulous recalibration. Why so long? Because even a half-inch error in positioning could allow millions of tons of ocean pressure to crush the tunnel structure like an aluminum can. The future taking shape. By 2025, Mary was back in motion, her cutter head polished, and her sensors recalibrated for the second phase of her underwater mission. Her crew, now seasoned veterans of subsea construction, maintained the same cautious pace of just a few feet per day, but every operation behind her ran with clockwork precision, each 20 inch thick concrete ring installed immediately after drilling, and the excavated material pumped back to processing plants for treatment. According to current projections, by 2027, Hampton Roads will feature four parallel tunnels with eight lanes of total capacity. The two original tunnels will be reconfigured for one-way traffic, while the two new passages handle the opposite flow. The system's total capacity is expected to reach around 150,000 vehicles per day, finally matching the region's explosive growth. Above the sea, two new artificial islands continue taking shape like mechanical coral reefs, the North Island serves as the rising gateway toward Hampton, essentially a parking structure in the middle of the ocean that grows larger every day. The old island has been massively expanded with new control towers, ventilation plants, and additional bridge ramps designed to separate traffic flows before vehicles plunge into the tunnel system. From a drone's perspective, the North Island resembles a giant funnel where cars roll down from bridges, dive one and a half miles beneath the sea, then burst back into daylight on the opposite shore. The fill volume reaches 1.6 million cubic yards, most of it recycled dredged material, roughly equivalent to 480 Olympic-sized swimming pools of earth and rock. Where Steel Meets Nature The South Island represents the mechanical heart of the entire operation, serving as Mary's launch platform, electrical substations, storage yards for concrete segments, and living quarters for 200 workers. The entire island surface is coated in thick asphalt strong enough to bear thousands of tons of heavy machinery rolling across it day and night. Yet amid this world of steel and concrete, an unexpected drama unfolds. Since the 1980s, these artificial islands have become the nesting site for nearly 25,000 seabirds, including the royal tern, a rare species that represents 98% of Virginia's entire colony. Conservation laws are strict. No nest destruction, no blasting, no construction near nesting zones. So how could engineers protect their construction schedule while saving the island's feathered residents? The solution sounded absurd, but it worked brilliantly. Engineers built an entirely new artificial island using dredged material, creating dry, sandy ground specifically designed for bird habitation. They deployed trained dogs acting as gentle predators, patrolling by whistle and GPS signals to guide the birds toward their new home. 
biological teams flew drones to monitor bird movements, established quiet zones, and erected soft barriers to reduce construction noise. The result was remarkable. Roughly 2,000 nests relocated safely with zero bird casualties, proving that even the most ambitious engineering projects can coexist with the natural world. Lessons Written in Water and Steel As the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel expansion takes shape beneath Virginia's Bay, what emerges isn't just a transportation solution, it's a testament to the American spirit of persistence, the courage to literally move mountains of seabed and confront the ocean itself to build pathways toward the future. From the rickety ferry boats that once struggled across these waters to today's $4 billion megastructure, this represents a 70-year journey of ambition, innovation, and unwavering faith in human ingenuity. It's the story of a nation that refuses to accept geographic limitations as permanent boundaries. Every day, as Mary continues her methodical journey through the darkness beneath the waves, she's not just boring through rock and sediment, she's carving tunnels through the impossible, transforming dreams that seemed like fantasy in 1957 into the concrete reality that will serve millions of travelers for generations to come. The question isn't whether humanity can keep digging deeper, crossing oceans, and perhaps one day tunneling beneath entire continents. The question is, what seemingly impossible challenge will we tackle next?